Jeremiah chapter 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I command your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them. According to all which I command you, so shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. And they've gone against what God has told them to do. They have, they have disobeyed. Man is great and very knowledgeable on disobeying what God tells him. Going all the way back to Adam. And you can bring it all the way back to this time of 2015. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers. And here's the oath. To give them a land flowing with milk and honey. As it is this day. And he brought them in the land. But they're not staying. They're in the land today but they're not staying. Not theirs. Then answered I. And said, So be it, O Lord. So be it is the word, he, Amen. But Jeremiah knows when, he, when he's living right now, he knows something's coming up. He knows there's going to be judgment upon the land that they're going. And he knows about the mercy of God. Even though this judgment is going to come from Babylon. He knows God will take care of Israel. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the streets of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem. Oh, street preaching. Saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and do them. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Even unto this day, Rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. And God said it over and over and over and over. Yet they obey not. That's man. Adam, don't eat the fruit. Adam, what'd you do? Moses, speak to the rock. Wham! Nor incline the ear. They wouldn't listen, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. That's the problem. That's the flesh. You can't be in the flesh and you can't be in the spirit. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I command them to do, but they did them not. And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers. I mean, serving the Canaanite gods, serving the Egyptian gods, maybe even serving the gods of, of Abram before he was called, which refused to hear my words. Does that sound familiar? I remember growing up in school, and I remember, I'd say about 10 years ago, we, we visited one of the public schools, and they were bringing up Native Americanism. That was a god before our forefathers. That was the gods before Christianity came with the Bible. It was bringing back in the public school system, throwing the word of God in prayer out of the school. Which refused to hear my words, they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Not God broken a covenant, they have. Serving God angers God. 
you got to find out and make sure that your God is the God of the Bible. Find out what gods and what men did that worship God compared to those that did what God told them to do. Not one man in the Bible who loved the Lord burned his children. Not one man in the Bible that loved the Lord had false prophets. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them. Now, evil is the consequence of sin. This is where we read in Isaiah where God says, I create evil. I'm going to give you the consequences of your sin. Evil is never sin. It is the result of you sinning, which they shall not be able to escape. How's that? Does it say over Corinthians that God will provide us a way that we may escape thereof? Here he tells his children, the Jews, you're not going to escape. How would you like to have a prophet of the Lord come and speak to you in your hometown, in your street? How would you like to have somebody come up down Daytona Beach and say, Mr. Hayward, respectfully, I understand what you're doing. You're right. But God has come to me out of the word of God to speak. If I can have a few minutes, sure, speak up. Can you imagine him opening up Jeremiah 11 and telling you, saying, and, you know, God's going to bring evil upon this place, but you're not going to Would that get you thinking? And this, I mean, it's not going to, I mean, we know God's going to do something, but you just imagine God coming up and saying, you know what, you're not going to escape it. What if God said, okay, I'm going to bring the Muslims and ISIS or whatever they're called, I'm going to bring them in this country, I'm going to let them have full charge. Wouldn't that, okay, come on. I know we're supposed to trust God, but wouldn't that just give you a little fear? For those who love the word and love the Bible, and the Bible says all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That the fact is, we're the witness, and it just may cost our necks, may cost us to be burned in a cage. Surely we're going to do right. Peter and John preached, even though they told us that we forbid you not to preach. And Peter said, we ought to obey the words of God more than man. But you look at those apostles in jail and their life and all that, and God just gave them personal peace. I mean, what if I part of the prison ministry? What if I walk into those gates in the prison ministry? And that's it. But being a Christian, you're not coming out. You don't get a phone call. And for that, we're going to put you where the Sodomites are. You preach against them, we'll put you, we'll put you with them. And you're not going to be able to escape. Those are harsh words. You picture God being so angry. You know, the other day when we we're in the streets preaching, them getting a car or something, whatever. God is love. What do you do when God says you're not going to be able to escape? And it's only going to get worse as we go on in Jeremiah. And we're not even told the full details of what Babylon did when they came and destroyed the city. It came three times. We are told that they take a pregnant woman and rip her open. They rape women. They took no regard for age. They take people to a cliff or the rocks and throw them off and they bang their head on the rocks below. I'd like to be thrown off a cliff on the rocks below and you're near death and you just left there. And then the rats, the, the, along the things, just come and start munching on you. 
This is people who have angered God because they will not listen to his word. Do you know what's worse for someone who doesn't listen to God's word? When he casts them into the lake of fire for all eternity, and are they able to get out? No. Though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. He already told Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. And he's telling them that when you come out and cry to me, you are in some serious trouble. That's the God of love. You know, when somebody comes up to you, you ought to remember, somehow remember Jeremiah 11, 11. Because that's his people. And yet you need to read verses 1 to 10 with it, saying that, you know, those are people that's going against the word of God. These are not adulterers. Well, they are, but there's no adultery. There's no stealing. The sin that's mentioned in this chapter is worshiping other gods besides God. And look at the consequences, verse 11. And we're going to see something important in verse 13. We're going to see America in verse 13. But we haven't got there yet. Other gods served in verse 10. Open up the yellow pages and see how many churches are listed. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods. Unto whom they offer incense. But they, the gods, shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. So not even their gods are going to listen. The 400 prophets of Baal with, with uh, Elijah. Nothing came down from heaven. Yet they still worship Baal. We're going to see that in verse 13. Baal couldn't answer, but they still answered him by worshiping him. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods. Every city had a false god. That is the realm of the Middle Eastern Asian areas. That's from Abram, where every city and town had their own god or goddess. Ephesians, or Ephesus, had Diana. One Pacific fallen god, I mean fallen god from, from the state of God who is God. And that was the main deity of that city or town. They're doing it in Judah. According to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have they set up altars to that shameful thing? Do you know how many altars are here in Daytona Beach when you just drive down the road? Every church has an altar. So how many altars are there? There are Baptists, there are Catholic, there are Presbyterian, there are Methodist. There are Zionists, there are missionaries, there are... How many are there? Almost every street has got a, got a altar. And it doesn't have to be a church. It can be an altar where you walk up to and yeah, I'll have some, give me, another, give me another bottle, give me another glass. That's an altar. You step up to it, you sit down and you get your drinks. They're offered to that shameful thing. So 
there's all these altars to one thing. Even altars to, to burn incense to Baal. That's a God that wouldn't listen to answering fire. And here we are, 600 BC, and they are worshiping Baal in Judah in Jerusalem. Therefore, pray not for the, this people. Proverbs 1:28. Neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Don't you pray for them, and I am not going to listen to them. That's going to be the followers of the Antichrist, those who receive the mark. But when Babylon comes... When Titus comes, I'm not going to listen. And it may get like that in America. Why should God listen? They're not listening to him. Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. So if you're not going to listen to God, guess what? Don't expect him to listen to you. Now, I know beer is made mostly of water. I'm not sure about whiskey and rum and drugs and all that. But I know in the tribulation period, the water system goes bloody. You won't be able to have beer in the tribulation. What has my beloved to do in my house? Malachi 1.6, 1.17, 3.14. Seeing she has wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from me. The sacrifices. When thou dost evil, then thou rejoices. Oh, look at that. You're just taking what, what is God's and what God has told you to do, and you're not doing it. And when you don't do it, you're, you're happy. When you do it not God's way, you do it your way, your programs, your stories, your ways, your service, your conductivity, you, however you do it, and it's not what the Bible says, yay! The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. It's healthy. Olive is the oil used to anoint the priest. Olive oil in the Bible is a type of the Holy Spirit. I believe olive oil is more healthier to cook with. Olive oil was used for the, the candles in the tabernacle. Olive oil was used for candles. And of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tomo, he had kindled a fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. This is not the burning bush. This is the burnt up bush. You can't do nothing with an olive tree that's been burnt. And that's what God tells you. I'm going to burn you up. You know what Jesus did to a fig tree? He cursed it. It withered up. These are two trees that have died because of God. See what God thinks about trees? For the Lord of hosts that planted thee, Israel, has pronounced evil against thee. Why? What have we been reading about? Not obeying the word of God. Are you saved? Are you born again by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, I am. You are. And you're living in sin. Yes. Well, why can't I get out of jail? 
Do you even got to ask that stupid question? You tell me you're guilty, and yet you want lenience from the judge. These people are guilty. They don't even believe they're guilty. They're not even going to announce their guilt. They're not sorry. That's the state of America today. Now you would think, now you take your typical woman, and I guarantee you this will happen to most, but many who goes to see a doctor and has a, a, a performance done to her that her child has been killed and just go on with life. Now, for some women, that that bother, after it's done, it bothers them. Guilty conscience. But for too many, it don't. And there may be two or three more of those procedures. And when somebody like that gets into the judgment of God upon their life, You can't escape America today with abortion and not know it's wrong because for every new story you hear about abortion, you hear about the radicals out there that they say, you know, it's murder and all that. The media doesn't realize they're doing God's service. Every time they report an abortion story or for abortion and all that, they always show the pro-abortionists. And listen, that's God telling you, hey, it's wrong. If it wasn't wrong, why is there a battle? There is no fight out there for a man and a woman to get married and, and be together. There's no fight about that. But there's a fight about two men getting, getting married. There's, there's a fight about two women getting married. And you'll stand before God, the great white throne judgment, and... Well, what was the conflict about that marriage? Well, there were some people that said it was wrong. There were some people that said it was right. Yeah. Right. And you didn't get the point? But you did that which was evil. Jeremiah stands in the way saying, what you're doing is wrong. And there are many people standing and saying, we're well, doing right. You know, all the people in, in Jerusalem and, and in Judah are going to have Jeremiah stamp and say, yeah, I told you so. Well, everybody else said. And you're going to see Jeremiah, he's going to say, they say, well, Lord, these people are saying peace, and there is no peace. For the evil of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, Israel is already gone, which they have done See, Judah should have saw Israel get taken in captive by the Assyrians. Oh, my. We better stop what we're doing. You can take people who drink alcohol and take them through the hospital with all the cirrhosis of the livers. And everything that they do and everything that gets cut out in and they'll walk out of the house on the exit and go get a drink. You can take people who smoke cigarettes and cigars and everything like that. You can take them to the hospital where, where they've got to cut open their throat and give them that, that thing that, so they can breathe. And I've had somebody in my family smoke a cigarette through that airway and then catch her face on fire because of the oxygen. And you can show them all the gross pictures and lungs and all that. They're going to walk out the exit and they're going to get themselves a pack of cigarettes. God shows us what's right and God shows us what's wrong. And he even uses just common ordinary day people.
Imagine an unsaved doctor telling you it's wrong to do. Israel got into trouble and Judah should have listened. Which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. Now you need to study Baal in the Bible. Baal, when you study him in the Bible, in Babylon, Mystery Babylon, and true God honoring books about Baal. You will find Baal as a one particular religion that still survives today. That gets out at noon, that has vestments, that has incense, located in every city or town. And that angers God. It just said it. Provoke me to anger. Does anybody really want to stand up and be honest with themselves that what can I do today to make God angry? Okay, let's go and serve Baal. Well, how do I do that? <laughs> As a Christian, you should study to show thyself approved unto God and work with the needs not be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. You should go through your Bible, find out what Baal is, find out what his prophets do, find out what his people do, and don't do what they do for Baal. And then you will please God. Because if what they do angers God, what you don't do, they do, will please God. And the Lord has given me knowledge of it. Of what? Of them doing what they're doing. And I know it. Then thou showest me their doing. You want to do right, the Lord will show you what they're doing wrong. Where on earth did you ever see Jesus enter in a city, get down on his knees and kiss the dirt? Yeah, but that's the victor of Christ. Where'd you ever see Jesus getting carried around by men in a bulletproof buggy? You don't have to study. You don't have to study the religion and go to the church and all. You can just God will show you. See what they're doing. Where I grew up, they, they go down the street. Huntington Street with Mary on their shoulders everyone sticking money to her where do you see that in the Bible I see it I saw it it's wrong but I was as a lamb or an ox that was brought to the slaughter death and I knew not that they had devised devices against me and this is Jeremiah saying, Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be no more remembered. He just get he said, Listen, you guys like an olive tree, and they're like, Okay, like an olive tree? Well, you're a tree, and we're going to burn you down. Wait till you find out who was doing this. We're going to cut you down, Jeremiah. We're going to kill you. But, O Lord of hosts, that judges right, righteously, that trieth the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them. Don't you pray that prayer. You're supposed to love your enemy. For unto thee have I revealed my cause. Now, a little add note here, verse 21. This is a new paragraph. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of the men of Antioch. Now, just real quick, go back to Jeremiah 1 1, real quick. Jeremiah 1 1, real quick. God don't want you in your home city. 
God wants you to move. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priest that were in Antioch. Go back to where we're in chapter 11. These are Jeremiah's hometown people. They did it to Jesus, by the way, too. When he preached his hometown, they carried him out to the broad of the hill, and they were going to kill him. But he got away. That seek thy life. Saying, prophesy not, prophesy not in the name of the Lord, that thou die not by our hand. How did they react to Jeremiah's message? We're going to kill you. Stephen. Just Jeremiah got to live a little longer than Stephen did. You know who killed Stephen? His own kindred, the Jews. You know why they gave Jesus Christ a cross? To shut him up. They were worried about the, you know, the Pharisees said, Oh, look at all the people who are following him, and they're not coming to us, and he's making us look bad. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword, army. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine, lack of food and water. The army is quick death. The famine, you die slow. The army is going to saturate the city and not allow supplies to come in. And even cut off your water source. They're going to besiege the city. And there shall be no remnant of them of Antioch. Because look. For I will bring evil upon the men of Antioch. Even the year of their visitation. Because they want to kill God's man. And we'll get more into uh, Antioch. In the next chapter. You know what Jeremiah got for preaching in the streets faithfully? He got death threats. And he just kept on preaching. Kept on being faithful.